Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. Yes, this is yet another auction car. This is completely separate from the flip car series, and I don't want to make the channel completely about auction cars, but I can use these auction cars to explain to you what I'm thinking, my thought process, and how I approach the correction process, because most of these that I pick up, they're going to be mechanically fine, fingers crossed, but they need to be cleaned up and they need paint correction for sure. So I can use these as an example as to what I'm thinking and the, the approach that, uh, uh, that I put towards these finishes, trying to get them to look uh, as possibly reflective and uh, fresh and crisp as possible, yet leaving as much clear coat behind for the next owner as possible. I hope that makes sense, and I really do hope uh, I'll put a series together like this for you. I hope it will help you uh, when it comes to your thought process and approach when it comes to paint correction. This thing is in great condition, actually. We picked this up for uh, a little over two grand, and there's no dash lights. It's just a little over 100,000 miles. It is dirty just like any other auction car would be. Um, but there, there are possibilities when it comes to uh, making money, making a profit, and uh, hooking somebody up with a decent car. This thing starts and drives perfectly well. Cold air condition, it's inspected until next year. Absolutely everything works. Does not miss a beat, runs perfectly fine, doesn't knock or tap or miss or leak. The strut towers are a little iffy, but I can take care of that, no problem. Does need to be detailed inside and out. The paint is absolutely trashed. Runs along nice and smooth. The steering wheel doesn't shake. It has good brakes. Uh, the Tires and wheels are mounted perfectly, a nice balance, a nice smooth ride. I gave it a bath, pulled it in the shop, and under the harsh lights, you and I are going to look at this finish and inspect it together. And you can see absolutely everything from etching to water spots to scratches to swirls to love marks to a little bit of oxidation and dullness. Everything uh, is hampering this finish from really shining and uh, getting to see that nice metallic paint job underneath shine through. Then you can see a little bit of it. We're going to remove as much of that as possible yet have the balance of leaving as much clear coat behind. That is our goal with every one of these. But on the back trunk here, this trunk lid, which is the absolute worst and has the most damage, I want to show you how far you can go, uh, how much turnaround you could really make if you have time to put a two-step into it, and a little bit, of, little bit of elbow grease. Using the shop lights, you can see just how bad the trunk lid is. Somebody had their briefcase or uh, bags on it and just slid it across and left it on the lid. It does need to be clayed. So let's clay it. Let's get the bonded contaminants off of there. And then on the trunk lid, we're going to go for the gusto. I'm going to show you what's possible when it comes to turnaround and the extreme limits you can go. And on the rest of the car, I'm going to show you that you can get results that are close to that with hardly any removing any clear coat at all. All you need to do is do some test spots and find the best team and combination when it comes to polisher, pad, and correction fluid. Take that time, put some time into it, and you'll get some excellent results. Okay, next I want to show you the paint depth, and I take this gauge everywhere, to a private sale or an auction. This tells me a story. It tells me if the car's been polished, or like this panel here, has been repainted. Almost double the amount of finish on the surface. As we get towards the back of the vehicle, there are some areas that will double or triple. It'll tell me where a panel has been either resprayed or there's Bondo and there's a repair made. On this vehicle, there are two, three panels that have been repainted. Other than that, we have um, rather virgin clear coat when it comes to somebody polishing or shaving it down. 
Uh, I don't think anybody has polished this before, but it's just a ton of damage from wear and tear, improper care and wash technique. Look on the chunk here where we have 25 mils. That tells me there's filler. So this is a great tool. I would order one off of Amazon and take it with for every sale when it comes to an automobile, new or used. I wanted to show you this because I want to remind you that uh, the paint systems on vehicles are three layers, primer, base coat, or color coat. And then here is the thickness of the very last top layer, clear coat. And yes, it is razor thin. So when you're doing correction, you want to keep it in mind and leave as much clear behind as possible. I'm going to show you some glossy units where we're starting off. When we're done, we'll do another measurement and you'll see some huge turnaround. First, on a disastrous finish like this, I would grab the rotary and a wool pad and 3D ACA 500. There are other combinations, but this would be the first I would reach for for damage this bad. When it comes to clear coat, some things I do want to refresh your memory, all besides it being very, very thin, it has a half-life. So every five years, its, it's ability to, to protect the base coat or the color coat underneath decreases by 50%. So that is... That happens every five years. Keep that into consideration. Uh, another thing, most of the rich portion of that formula of your clear coat, its ability to protect against UVA, UVB, IR, and the hardest portion of that clear is the crust near the top. When that's shaven off, the rest of it is absolute junk, soft, and hardly any protection whatsoever. I have a small area taped off. We're going to keep the damage on there and I'll show you after the cutting process and then finishing the results we've made. I put the compound on an application pad and rub it into the panel and then I prime the pad and then I get to work. I don't put lines down or dots. It can get quite messy with a rotary to begin with and I like to keep all of that under control here at the shop. Although the rotary giving you fantastic results when it comes to cutting and finishing second to none, it can be a bit dirty. It can th throw some dust into the air, some fibers, uh, some materials from the pads you use. So keep that in mind. Also take notice, the polisher is under complete control, nice and smooth, not throwing the polisher around. I myself personally, I want a nice even cut. I don't want to jab the polisher around. Uh, it just gives you an uneven plow like cut. I do not like that. So you'll see my correction speed and smoothness pretty much the same, no matter if I'm using a rotary or a dual action or orbital polisher. The polisher is not screaming on the highest speed setting. Between the third and fourth speed setting is perfectly fine. I'm just guiding the polisher. I'm letting it do the work. If you're tired at the end of the day from correcting, you're doing it completely wrong. For the most part, you want to keep your polishers flat on the panel, except for angles and curvatures and peaks, and if you're trying to concentrate in one area. Also, what's nice about the 3D products, even though they can be a beast to wipe off, they have a very long cycle time or open time. So I can work a large area like this trunk here, take my time, do as many passes as I'd like to do with minimal dusting, easy wipe off, as you can see here. But most importantly, look at these results. This is just the cutting process. 
About 95% of the imperfections have been removed. What's left behind is a little bit of chipping and some of the deeper damage and scratches through the cl uh, clear coat down into the base coat that you just can't chase after. What's left behind also is a bit of hazing. We're gonna finish that off and we'll take care of that during the finishing process. But look at the difference. The finishing process on this particular car will be a Eurofiber pad M302 from Kalkemi and a dual action polisher. This one is a 21 millimeter throw. That's going to change from car to car, but this clear and this finish is medium leaning towards hard. So this is the combination that's work, that works best for this vehicle, but I will show you the different combinations for the different vehicles that we bring in and clean up. Okay, now come in and take a look. The haze is gone. We've brought out the clarity, the depth. That metallic flake is shining through and a huge difference from the rest of the trunk that still has all that damage. And of course I couldn't help myself, so I removed the tape and finished the rest of the trunk area. I would love to take the time and do this to the whole vehicle, but with these types of cars, time is money, and it's maybe unfortunate to say, but you want to put in as, as little work as possible on these to turn around and make the most profit. Now though, however, take a look at the gloss that we have on this trunk lid. So this is what is possible. In the next video coming up, I'm gonna show you what in reality you should do, but get similar results. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. Hope to see you all there.